There are some people that respond really well to coffee and others that find that it makes them feel more nervous, anxious, and irritable. So I'd love to hear your opinion below. Drop a comment below how you respond to coffee. What's up guys, my name is Lucas and in today's video, I'm here to talk to you about some potential dangers associated with drinking caffeinated coffee. So for those of you who are brand new to my channel, my mission is to bring you guys the most cutting edge health information that you'll struggle to find on Google. So please like this video, hit that subscribe button below, and if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below as I do my best to respond to each and every single one. Today, I'm here to present some potential dangers associated with drinking coffee. But of course, I need to emphasize that I am not someone who is entirely against drinking coffee. All I'm here to do is present some research that may influence your quality of life. The information depicted in this presentation is purely for informational purposes only. Please consult your healthcare professional before making any changes to your lifestyle or routine. This is not medical advice. First of all, I want to start with the major benefits associated with drinking coffee. So what I want to do is analyze this umbrella review that identified 201 meta-analyses of observational research within and looking at 67 unique outcomes. So what they found was that chronic coffee consumption was supported by significant associations with lower risk for the generic outcomes of all-cause mortality, cardiovascular mortality, and total cancer. Consumption of coffee was associated with lower risks of specific cancers such as prostate cancer, endometrial cancer, melanoma, non-melanoma skin cancer, and liver cancer. Consumption also had beneficial associations with metabolic conditions including type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, gallstones, gout, and renal stones, even beneficial for various liver conditions including hepatic fibrosis, cirrhosis mortality, chronic liver disease, and other chronic kidney disorders. So coffee has broad spectrum metabolic benefits. In addition, coffee consumption has been associated with reduced risks of Parkinson's disease, depression, and Alzheimer's disease. So now I'm here to talk to you about one key danger associated with drinking coffee that a lot of people neglect, and that is how coffee consumption can directly impair the body's ability to absorb iron. Now, bear in mind, there are literally millions of people worldwide suffering from iron deficiency, and iron deficiency can lead to various consequences within the body, one of which is absolute difficulty with energy, fatigue, and even low cortisol. So you can see this study here, inhibition of food iron absorption by coffee. And what they found that a cup of coffee reduced iron absorption from a hamburger meal by up to 39%. The biggest takeaway here is if you are someone that's had low iron in the past or has been anemic in the past, it's probably a good idea not to be drinking coffee with your iron supplements or your iron rich meals. On the other hand, this can be beneficial for those that actually have too much iron such as hemochromatosis and certain men that struggle with clearing out iron, they hold too much iron. That can actually be beneficial in that circumstance. But the key point to note is that if you are someone that struggles with low iron, please avoid drinking coffee with your iron supplements or your iron rich meals. The next major danger associated with drinking coffee is the fact that coffee can affect vitamin B1 status in the body. Now, vitamin B1 is known as thiamine. It is the very first vitamin identified. And in fact, vitamin B1 plays a huge role in the ability to convert the carbohydrates you eat into energy or ATP. Unfortunately, certain products such as coffee, tea, raw fish, shellfish, they contain something known as thiaminases, which are enzymes that can actually destroy vitamin B1 levels. So again, this is really important for those that struggle with low energy and probably explains why some people feel really good on the Thiamax TTFD 
vitamin B1 that I've spoken about on my channel. And that can be used to replenish vitamin B1 levels and improve energy production and restore that spark again. Finally, the other danger associated with drinking coffee is the suppression of GABAergic function and tone in the brain, which can directly affect one's anxiety levels. It makes someone feel sort of um, irritable and anxious. And so this is part of the mechanism by which caffeine can exacerbate anxiety. In addition, caffeine can also increase noradrenaline, which again, when is too high, can lead to anxiety. This study was titled, Caffeine Induces Neurobehavioral Effects Through Modulating Neurotransmitters. And they found that caffeine was found to suppress inhibitory GABAergic activity and modulate GABA receptors as well. So this is probably why a lot of people feel good when they add taurine to their coffee, which has been shown to increase GABAergic tone in the brain. So that's definitely a key point to consider if you suffer from anxiety when you drink coffee. Thanks everyone for listening in. I hope you learned something new. This video was all about presenting some potential dangers associated with drinking coffee. If you learned something new, please like the video and share the video. Be sure to check out all of my other social media channels, my newsletter, my website, my Instagram, my podcast. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.